Good morning. Welcome to our day of the devotion. It is Tuesday. It is October 19th. Um, it's starting to get a little colder now, if you notice, in the mornings. <clears throat> so this Sunday, depending on the weather, if it is a little chilly, we'll move inside into our family room uh, to have church. Then I'll put a heater in the garage for the children to meet in the garage for their class so that we're all out of the weather. Uh, <clears throat> so, we are looking at words in the Bible, and the word we're going to look at this morning is consider. The word consider simply means to think carefully about something, uh, especially before you make a decision, to consider all the consequences, consider what could happen, what could not happen before we make decisions. How many times have you made a, um, a, de a decision too soon and then regretted it? Or made it made the wrong decision and regretted it. Uh, we all need to think carefully before we make decisions, especially big ones. Uh, I remember when I bought this house that I'm living in now. My wife and I had had um, a, a child, uh, two children, and and we were she was pregnant with a third one, and we were living in a little two bedroom one bath house in North Long Beach, a house behind a house. And it was small. It was like like 800 square feet. And so I realized that we needed to to make a to to buy a, a, another house. That was that's a big decision. To 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 buy a home, a house. That's a big decision. So we were looking all over. And whenever you found a in Long Beach at Lakewood area, whenever you found a bigger home, it was always an add-on. And many times, it was. It was step down, or you had to go through one room to get to another room. Uh, and then finally we found this home in here in Cerritos that I'm in now. And I remember making this decision to buy it. And after I made the decision and bought it, I was working with my brother, and my brother thought I was crazy to be, have a 300 and some dollar a month payment. My father-in-law thought I was crazy to have that big of a payment. And then I started second-guessing myself. But then I look back now and I think, oh my gosh, that was the best decision I ever made. Uh, I should have bought every house in the neighborhood. I paid 38500 for this five-bedroom, three-bath home. Uh, it was a good decision, but I didn't just make it like that. Uh, and then I remember my brother and I, we were fixing up property, buying property, fixing up and reselling it. And we were, we were working on this one property in North Long Beach and, and, a, and a gentleman down the street came to us, wanted to know if we wanted to buy his house. And it was just a one bedroom house, a little one bedroom house there. And uh, and so we worked out a price and my brother was just holding back and holding back, wasn't real sure about it. I made the decision because I knew we were gonna lose it if we didn't act on it right away, to go ahead and buy the house. And after it was an escrow, then he came to me to say, okay, let's buy the house. He didn't know that I had already made the decision. <laughs> I had already put it in escrow. Uh, I didn't want to just wait. So we have to make big decisions a lot of times. Let me give you another one that I had to make. When I was disciplining my boys uh, before I was a Christian, uh, I, I, would, I would react and, and punish them out of reaction. And then when I became a Christian, I realized that that was wrong, the wrong way to do it. And so I made the decision that when I was gonna discipline them, I didn't do it immediately. I told them to go to their bedroom and that dad was gonna come in there to punish them. And it gave me a chance to cool off. And it, and it was harder for them because they're sitting in the bedroom waiting for dad to come in thinking, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? Uh, but those are decisions that we have to make. But here's, the, uh, the Bible talks about other decisions here. Um, you have to consider how big the world is that God created for us. When you, when you consider how big the world is, then you consider how big God is. I don't know how many times I lay in bed thinking about this. How big is, consider how big God is. God, God spoke this universe into existence, created it out of nothing. Uh, the, the, the children asked, one of the youth asked at the youth group the other night, 
uh, whether I thought there was civilization life on other planets. And because they think there is, because it's just so big that there would be naive of us to think that we're the only ones. And so what I tell them is scripture doesn't tell us anything about life and other planets. It just says God created it all. I believe, in my mind, I believe that God created it just for our wonderment, just for us to look up and wonder, for us to look up and know that there's a God. But think of it, but when you really, I can't spend the time now, but when you really dwell on how big the universe is, that it literally has no end, literally no end to the universe, to the to creation. Consider how big God is. Job did that in, in, in 37 verses 14 and 16 says, listen to this, Job, stop and consider God's wonders. Just stop and consider. Do you know how God controls the clouds and makes his lightning flash? Do you know how the clouds hang poised? Those wonders of him who is perfect in knowledge. Do you ever just wonder? I do. I, I, I sit there in, in, in wonder. In, in Psalm 8, 3 and 4, so David said, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mine that you are my, man that you are mindful of him? When I consider all how big the universe is, and then I look at little old me and, and, and humanity and think, oh, do you really care? How you care that much about us? You care that much about us that you created a universe just for our wonderment? Then in Psalm 143, 5 and 6, it says, I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works, and I consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. We serve a, a, a big God, don't we? We serve Have You ever just stop and consider that sometimes, how big God must be. What are we going to see when we, when we see God? And then in one, one of Psalms 107, 43, it says this, Whoever is wise, let him heed these things and consider the great love of God. It says, if you're, if you're wise, consider these things. Consider everything God has created. Consider how much God loves us. How much he loves us. That he would create an endless universe just for our wonderment. Wow. And then there's other things that God tells us to consider finally. In, in Philippians 2, 3, and 5, he says this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Consider others better than you. Each of you should not look at your own interests, but also the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Consider, consider other, don't just think about yourself. Consider other people. Consider the needs of, of, of other people. And then in Hebrews 3.8, it says this. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. <clears throat> I consider everything, in comparison to know God, I consider everything else just rubbish. What does Scripture say? What good does it do to gain the whole world and forfeit your soul in the process? So the fact that I know God, that I know Jesus, that I know God personally, everything else is, is, is meaningless. That's what's important. Consider what's important. And then he tells us, and you've heard me share this many times, it says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Don't just live for yourself. It says, let us not give up meeting together as some in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. And then in James, <laughs> this says, even consider the trials in your life. Uh, consider them joyful. Listen, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that your that your that the testing of your faith develops perseverance and you become mature. So consider <clears throat> consider them joyful, because they make you a stronger Christian. And then in <clears throat> 
lastly in in one three says, if anyone considers himself religious, yet does not keep a type ring on their tongue, they deceive themselves and their and their religion is, is, is useless, worthless. We have to control our tongues, what we say. Religion that God our Father accepts the spirit faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep herself from being polluted by the world. To look after people that are that can't take care of themselves and don't get and don't let this world don't 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 have a love for this world. Have a love for God, not a love for the world. Have a love for people, not of yourself. Give to others, not just to yourself. Consider those things. So now you know what to consider, okay? God bless you. Have a great day. Remember tonight is our youth group impact. We're meeting in the garage now because it's warmer in there. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you again tomorrow morning. Have a great, great day. God bless you all.